Morse code is still in very widespread use, uh, particularly on the amateur radio bands where you can hear quite a few uh, Morse code messages if you listen down at the, uh, the bottom end of the, uh, the, the shortwave bands. One of the main ways of sending messages using Morse is to use what's called a, a straight key or a pump handle key. That's the sort of key that has a, a lever that goes up and down. It's the most simple form, but still very, very effective. So in this video, we're going to tell you all about them, the various types of key that are available, um, the, uh, the way they're used, and also what to look for if you're thinking of buying one. So what exactly is a straight Morse key? Well, it's the basic form of Morse code key that has a lever that's supported in the middle by a bearing, and it has a handle at one end to push it up and down, hence the name pump handle. When it's pressed down, it makes contact, and when used with a radio, we get the familiar sound. <laughs> Moving it up and down in line with the dots and dashes required sends a message such as, hello. There's a huge variety of Morse keys available. Um, there are a good selection of uh, new ones available uh, from various stockists or, or on the internet. And also there is a, a, a wide variety of uh, second-hand ones or, or even ex-military or, or ex-commercial ones that can be used as well. So uh, let's take a look at some of uh, what's available. There's an enormous variety of uh, new keys available on the market, costing from uh, the, the low end sort of prices right up to uh, what are considered quite expensive. And uh, very often the, the expensive ones will be used by some of the uh, uh, people who, who really enjoy using Morse, but uh, many of us will want to look at, at what's a bit cheaper. And here I, I've got a, uh, one that's right at the bottom end of the market in its, its box, which I can get it open. Um, Let's take that off. There's a, um, a lead in there to connect it up uh, and also some sticky uh, magnetic uh, mounts because at the bottom of the key, I'll just get it, take it out of its bag. Oh, there we go. Um, it's got uh, some magnetic screws on there. And this key, you can see it there. Um, you can squeeze it together. Um, having tried to adjust it before, there's not a lot of adjustment in it and it's not it's a little bit too small for you, uh, use, normal use in a, a station. Next we have the mid-range key. This is a very much nicer key to use. It's quite stable on the table and the underside has a relatively non-slip finish so it won't move around too much while you're using it. But it will give you more on what to look for later so you can get the right key for your particular needs. Now let's open our more expensive key. So just receive the uh, box with a, a new Morse key in and you can see from this end uh, a little bit more about uh, what it is. And so what we'll do is open it out and see what it's uh, like. We've got lots of paper here and there we are. One new nice weighty morse key and uh, yeah there we are so let's try this one out it feels rather nice it sends well it has a heavy base and i can send morse code nice and easily with it but as i said before i'll give you much more about what to look for later but of course you don't have to uh, buy a new Morse key. There's uh, a really good selection uh, of many vintage ones that you can obtain uh, for uh, a, what, what's a comparatively reasonable price. In fact, you can see one behind me here. Um, I'm just reaching around. That one there is uh, uh, dates from about uh, 1900, just after 1900, maybe 1910, something like that. British Post Office uh, Morse key, um, quite solid and sturdy and uh, very nice. Um, I've got another one here. This is what's called a, a clipsal key, and uh, that uh, is also quite nice to use. And uh, I can show you that a little bit later. And this is the what's called a, a steel lever key, and this one is used uh, or was the style that was used very often by American uh, telegraphers 
and uh, it works very well. It's, it's a nice key, um, but you can see it's mounted on a, a base there to help with its usage. And another type of key as well that's quite common, um, these uh, British um, military keys really dating from uh, uh, the Second World War. They're called the uh, WT8 AMP key and in fact you can just see it on, on the, uh, the screen there. And uh, these, they're slightly different types because the uh, uh, the British uh, government issued a um, a request or a, a, a specification to which they should be built and it was fairly loose and a variety of keys came back but generally they're, they're not bad and uh, can be picked up uh, quite often for not too uh, lower uh, not too high a price. So there, that's uh, some of the options that we've got there. So what do you actually need to look for when uh, buying a, a Morse key? What are the, uh, the chief requirements? Well, a lot of it is actually down to personal preference. And uh, whilst we can set down some uh, guidelines and ideas, things to point us to look for, um, a lot of it is down to personal preference and, and what it feels like to you. Because very often you'll, you'll think, oh yeah, that one feels nice and that one's not so nice. And somebody else may uh, disagree with that and have different ideas, but that's fine. Uh, so what we'll do is give you a few ideas of things to look for, things certainly that I, I appreciate, and uh, then you can uh, see how the keys go. Very often, if you're buying a new Morse key, if you can go and try it out, that is great, but that's not always an opportunity for everybody. So what do you actually look for when buying a new Morse key? A solid base is always a good start. If it's heavy and solid, then it won't move around so much when it's being used. Some even have holes so that they can be screwed down to a desk or table. But these days, people generally like to have them so that they can be moved away or put away when they're not in use or whatever. Another point is for the key to be able to pivot freely. A good bearing might be used in some keys, and this is always a help. Then they should be properly adjustable. Both the gap and the spring tension uh, should be adjustable. Some keys, like our low-end key, have very little adjustment, so you can't get it right. And I found it quite difficult to get it even close to what I wanted to uh, be able to have it at. The handle should also be comfortable. When sending, you need to hold the handle and not just press it down from the top. So it should be comfortable to use, particularly over long messages and things like that. Finally, the key should feel right. This is a bit difficult to define sometimes, but at the end of the day, do you like it? Do you like the feel of it? So if you can try one out before you buy it, this certainly is a good idea obviously not always possible. So that's our summary about straight uh, Morse keys or pump handle keys. And if you want to know more, there's plenty more on the uh, our website. Uh, just head over to the description area for more details anyway, but also uh, check out the links there, the, the links to, uh, to more considerably more information. And please don't forget to like the video and also subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.